President Bola Tinubu is hailing Senator Mondo Bewolo's victory in the Edo State Governorship election. He calls it a sign of public support for the All Progressive Congress's policies and economic reforms. Tinubu praised party leaders for their efforts and urged Bewolo to unite the state, encouraging him to engage opponents in dialogue. He also lauded the peaceful conduct of the election as a sign of Nigeria's maturing democracy. The president encouraged any dissatisfied candidate to seek legal redress and lauded INIC and security agencies for ensuring a smooth process. Now let's catch the moments building up to INIC declaration of Senator Mondo Bewolo's uh, Bewolo winner of the Edo governorship election. Ovietame George reports from Benin. While the results were being announced at the INEC Coalition Center, the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Umar Ganduje, and governors of the APC posed for the paparazzi at the residence of Edo North Senator Adams Ali Oshiomole. Shortly after, they left for the Benin Airport. The final announcement sparked celebration for the APC governor-elect, Mande Okwebolo, joined by President of the Nigerian Senate, Godswill Akwabio, in Oshiomole's residence. That Akwebola mode of APC, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. comes from God alone. Yeah. Secondly, let me thank the good people of Edo that have made this possible. Thirdly, let me thank our traditional ruler, Omonoban Edo Kuakolokolo, L.Y. the second. I'm excited and happy that the words that we have spoken from our mouth, God had blessed it. And God has made it come to pass. And we cannot do anything but to praise God for today's victory and to thank Edo people because we are moving to an era where Edo State will rise and rise for the good of the people. God bless Edo people. Oshio Mole and Akbabio are basking in the euphoria of the APC victory in Edo State. This is a turning point in the politics of Edo State. The will of God has been done today. So Monday, this is God's decision. This is God's will. Nobody, you do not need to shed blood in order to become a governor. Yes, sir. Take care of your people. Yes. God has entrusted a door into your hands. And may God guide you. May God be with you. Amen. May prosperity come from you. Amen. God, by his infinite powers, has decreed Senator Monde Akpako Miza, alias Akpako Rescue. Some now call him Akpako Miracle because I don't need all of that to make up for the eight-year disaster of Obaseki and Aswet together. So I am a very happy man, I am a fulfilled man, and now I ask God in his evening powers to further enrich him with wisdom so that together he will make a difference. On such occasion, the glass could be topped up once, twice, but Oshiomole wants a third shot to wind down a victorious day. You are the governor
It's a moment of celebration for the All Progressives Congress. It will surely last for a very long time as Senator Mande Okwebolo has been elected governor of Edo State. He is the man of the moment. From Benin, Ovietime George, Arise News. Thank you, Vitamin Judge, for that report, robust report on the Edo State election from Benin. We are now joined by Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku, looking delectable, as always. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Kichi. Um, Good we're morning. We're just speaking <laughs> off morning air, and we're talking about APC's win in Edo State. Seems to have been capitalized by Governor Obaseki's sort of internal conflict. How much do you think his political struggles influence this election and also his performance as governor uh, in that state? In Ankechi, this election can be arguably described as a contest of the godfathers. In this case, uh, the outgoing Godwin Obaseki and former governor Adams Oshiomale, who is of the APC. Uh, both of them were pals, and, and in fact, Obaseki was his right-hand man. And Obaseki was a member of the APC until he decamped to the PDP. And um, in the last elections, remember the famous uh, slogan, I don't know be Lagos, referring to President Bola Tinubu, who is the godfather in Lagos, and uh, referencing that what happens in Lagos cannot happen in Edo. I think that today Obaseg is probably leaking his wounds. And it's unfortunate for the PDP candidate Aswe Godalo because he seemed to have inherited the baggages of his predecessor along with all the enemies that the man has, you know. And so Basaki was also viewed as not, you know, having worked assiduously for the state in the last couple of years. So all of this together, but we also have to look at the other angle. The election was peaceful. However, the PDP is already contesting the results, which may suggest that they will go to court, thereby entangling themselves and the new government in an expensive and time-consuming litigation process. Now, the big question is, will we ever have elections that will not be contested in court in this country? Is this, you know, is this going to be a reality or is it already a hopeless situation? I, I don't know whether you're asking me the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I have no answer. We're, for we're you. asking the government, we're the asking the politicians. INEC. And the players in the field, stakeholders, will ask that question. And Nigerians as well, actually, because we're part of the stakeholders. Now, I just read a while ago the president saying, this is a sign of public support for APC's policies. What's your sense of the president's statement? Well, he's already also said that whoever does not agree with the results can go to court. There is a sense that there was the federal might, as we call it in Nigeria, meaning a federal influence in the elections in Edo State. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, PDP candidate was a good one. However, he was fighting against the APC machine. He was not only fighting a battle for himself, not only the APC machine, but also all that was against um, his predecessor or so-called godfather, Godwin Obaseki. The question then is also, um, can elections be actually free and fair? Can we remove or divorce so-called godfathers and their influences in elections in this country? Also remember that INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, which can be considered the most, well, one of the most important offices in this country because that surrounds elections. Without elections, you cannot have a democracy. So if you have an INEC that people do not have trust in, that's a problem. Remember that uh, the current chairman, Professor Mahmoud Jaga, you know, was pummeled last year during the presidential elections of 2023 for a poor outing, for a poor showing. It hasn't been uh, removed. That office has not been rejected. We still have the same INEC. So these are part of the questions that, that um, Nigerians are asking. Also tie this to the voter turnout. According to election observers, this was one of the poorest turnout in elections in Edo State. You might ask, why is that so? Is it because people no longer have confidence in the government, in INEC, or are there other factors playing out here? This is a serious question. This is a study that needs to be done. If there are other factors playing out, if it's the government um, 
influence and what it does during elections, then we have to uh, begin to review that because it diminishes the essence of participatory democracy. If people do not participate, what do you have? That's not a democracy. I, I'm sure you wanted Absolutely. to say before Nketu comes, I'm sure you wanted to say Mahmoud Yakubu there. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. not Jack. Yakubu, yes, that's yes. The head of yes. Uh, that's a very important point that you bring. The reason why people don't come out to vote be it that they don't trust the system or they're they're fearing for their lives in case of violence and you know pdp labor party they've been uh, issuing complaints about vote manipulation and whatnot i just wanted to touch quickly on the labor party at the beginning of this race it seemed like we had a three-horse race closer to election it seemed like okay, now it's just PDP and APC. What happened to Labour Party in this election? Nothing happened to Labour Party. Labour is relatively new on the block. Their candidate is also new. Um, he doesn't have that groundswell of support locally. Um, he's seen as an outsider, a foreigner. I think that um, if Labour wants to continue to have a three-horse race in local government elections, state and national level, they have a lot of work to do. They do have a chance. It is possible, but it requires a tremendous amount of dedication, of focus, of putting their party together. It will take years. When you look at other parties that have come thus far, they have had alliances, they have had to put in the work. So that's what is going to happen for Labour Party. Also, they might have to begin to pick the candidates that are more popular within the states or wherever they are running for election. However, at the federal level, they seem to have a very popular candidate. When it comes to the state and local government, it's not the case, but they do have a chance for the future, depending on what they decide to do with that opportunity. All right, before we leave you, before we go on break, uh, just a quick one. Election observers, uh, they are saying that um, the concerns about the transparency of coalition urging INEC to invoke its powers under Section 65 of the Electoral Act 2022 in, in, in 30 seconds. What's your sense of that? The point is that INEC is disappointing a lot of Nigerians and um, something has to change. All right, that's it. Thank you so much.